hunting I didn't come to until later. Uh, in fact, it's sort of the progression would be, you know, foraging and then fishing, then cooking. And I wanted the ability to get out there and, and, and get my own meat. You know, I'd been able to do that with fish forever. And, and so that kind of completed the package. Uh, so now no matter where I am, whether I'm on the ocean or, you know, in a forest or, or whenever it's hunting season, I can come home with something to eat. And I mean, that's just a, a, that's a great feeling. What some people have said is like, well, is there anything beyond the farmer's market? And, and yeah, it's hunting and fishing. I mean, the easiest way to explain it is anybody who's ever been on a camping trip and has gone fishing, even, a, you know, even in a stock trout pond, you know, it, where you know, it's not exactly the most challenging fishing there is, but, but anybody who's ever done that and come home with a fish you know, to the campsite and has you know, cooked it in a frying pan and some bacon grease, you know, that fish is a memorable fish. And, and it's memorable not just because of the flavor of the fish itself, it's memorable because you caught it. Uh, you, know, you went to the trouble of going out there to the wild and getting it and bringing it back and eating it. And, and every time I do that, uh, it, makes it, you know, it makes just the food taste better. I mean, you, every meal is a memory. When you eat wild animals, they taste like what they've eaten, so they have flavor. Everything in America that you get in most of your grocery stores, it's all corn-fed. So there's this, there's a sort of schwa of, of flavors of meat, and, and that's what people, I think, call gamey. They think that flavor is gaminess, and they're really unused to that. It's actually funny, we did an experiment once. Hank and I had a party, and we did a mallard tasting. We had four different mallards, one that had been feeding on grass, one that had been feeding on corn, one that had been feeding on rice, and one that had been eating acorns. And so Hank cooked them all identically, arranged them on a platter, and he put some clues down so he would know which is which, and he numbered them and said, everyone try these and tell us what your favorite was. And it was a very close tie. The acorn-fed duck was number two. The grass-fed duck, which was mine, it was my first mallard ever, that was number one. The rice-fed duck was number three, and most of our ducks are rice eaters. They're incredibly tasty. And the corn-fed duck was number four because everyone said it just didn't taste like anything. And that's because it tastes like everything, because everything eats corn. So not everything is supposed to taste like corn fed, you know? Animals are supposed to taste like what we eat. And it's really a joyous thing to go out and know there's so much variety in what you can eat because it's real. Hunting can be tough sometimes. Um, you know, it can be physically tough and it can be emotionally tough. I mean, you can't get away the fact that, that rabbits are cute, deer are cute. They also have the misfortune of being delicious, but, <laughs> you know, and, and it's so, you kind of get over that and you realize this is what meat comes from. This is, this is what it's all about. And you either handle it or you don't. And I'm perfectly okay with, uh, you know, a vegetarian who's thought about, you know, I can't, I can't kill something because I've, they've faced it. And no problem, you've made your choice. Um, I do get a little annoyed um, at people who buy all their meat from, you know, Costco or Sam's Club, you know, cellophane wrapped, and it doesn't look like anything. And then they give me a hard time for hunting. Um, really? I expected hunting to be weird. I thought I was going to become callous toward animals and toward their suffering and their death. I thought that I would make myself hardened toward that. And in reality, I feel much closer to animals now. I feel closer to nature. I feel like I'm a part of nature. You know, when you get your meat at the supermarket, um, it's all handed to you. When you get it out here in the open, you have to work for it and there's no guaranteed success at all. I mean, there are many days where I go out hunting and I come home with nothing because it's just not that easy. So I like working for it. I like connecting with what it is we were for, you know, a million years before we invented agriculture and, and created all that we see around us now. I really like connecting with what we used to be. You know, there's so much outside, you know, all over Texas. I mean, Texas is an unbelievable state for wild food. I mean, and you have so many different habitats from the, you know, the West Texas desert, basically, to the, to the really almost tropical area around Beaumont. And then Galveston is different, and then the Panhandle is different. I mean, the, the, the diversity of, of environments that you have and the, the, all the different wild foods that are in those environments, it's just, it, you know, you could spend an entire lifetime just sort of going around Texas and exploring all the opportunities that you've got for, you know, you've got mesquite, you've got, you know, all of the, the, um, the berries and fruits that live around here. You've got, you know, got tremendous hunting. I mean, some of the best hunting in the world is in Texas. You've got some of the best gulf fishing in the world around Galveston. You've got, you know, huge rivers 
that you know that are that are full of fish. And, and I mean, if you live in Texas and you're interested in wild food, you really don't have to go any farther than the borders of your state.